So a very uh, warm afternoon to all of you who have joined us today for this webinar series on the occasion of death anniversary of Dr. B. Sahani Sir. We are here to uh, take medicine into the space and we have organized this international webinar on advancement of homeo advancement in homeopathy on the uh, as on the occasion of death anniversary of Dr. B. Sahani Sir. It is being organized by uh, Homeopathic Science Congress Society in association with Sukul Institute of Homeopathic Research and in collaboration with Homeopathy 360. So we here I welcome you to the journey of extending homeopathy to achieve the target of ultimate medicine. And we uh, this is the day one of this series. I hope you all are excited to learn from great speakers, international speakers on this platform for uh, for uh, 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 once again. So I, will, I, Dr. Yashika Arora, heartily welcome you all to this event. And um, uh, on behalf of Homeopathic Science Congress Society uh, and uh, School Institute as well as Homeopathy 360. I want uh, I uh, I want to pay homage to Dr. B. Sahani sir, and uh, we uh, we are glad that we, uh, Homeopathy 360 is a part of this webinar series, and we are uh, we are uh, paying homage through this webinar series to Dr. Sahani sir. So uh, I before we begin the session, and I hand over the session to the organizer, to the man behind this webinar series. I want to welcome uh, all the delegates as well as our esteemed speakers and the dignitaries of today's session and i would like i take this privilege to thank mr manish jain the director of vision publishers who has given who has given us this platform to organize this series and also to adopt uh, none other than dr mk sahani sir and his whole team who have been working so hard day in and out to promote this webinar series and organize this so here i welcome uh, our, our coordinator and the organizer of this series uh, none other than dr mk sahani sir as you all know that uh, he needs no introduction he's an inspiration himself and uh, he has been a support and a guide, guidance uh, and guide, guide uh, for all the homeopaths. He's ready to help everybody. But uh, as the uh, as as it's a tradition, I would like to introduce him. So he is uh, Dr. Kumar Sahani, sir, BSc, DHMS, MD, Home, PG, DHHM from Symbiosis and CCCR from Symbiosis and PhD from MUHS. He was the first PhD holder in the state of Bihar in homeopathy and he has worked under Dr. Sahani sir who was a recognized scientist and discoverer of transmission of medicine energy from a distance on who, whose death anniversary we are organizing this webinar series and uh, he's also uh, he was also the former chairman of education committee of CCH and has served CCH uh, since for approximately 22 years he's also the president of Bihar Voluntary Health Association serving his third term and the Secretary of Voluntary Health Association of India, serving his second term. He's also the Chairman of Research Institute of Sahani Drug Transmission and Homeopathy, uh, and also one of the founders. He's a scholar of transmission of drug energy from a distance, and the PG coordinator and professor HOD at GD Memorial Homeopathic Medical College, Patna. He's, uh, the, he, he's also the Chief Editor of the Journal of Homeotransmission, Patna and Homeotaram, as well as the Honorary Advisor of Indian Journal of Classical Homeopathy, Calcutta, visiting professor at various homeopathic medical colleges and the Secretary General of Homeopathic Science Congress Society as well. He has been conducting uh, recruitment of homeopathic faculties and medical officers as, as an expert and has published uh, in papers internationally as well as nationally. Also, he, uh, he uh, also got his articles published in various reputed journals. He has won so many awards. To name a few, I would like to name Kent Award by H. Hamai in 1999, the Best Teacher Award by Dr. Mahindra Singh Memorial Trust in 2016, Lifetime Achievement Award by Cancer Institute Institute of Homeopathy, Kolkata, Lifetime Achievement Award by Research Society of Homeopathy at Jodhpur, and uh, many other awards. Uh, also, Doctor of Philosophy, Honoris Causa by Medicina Alternativa, Open University, Sri Lanka in January 2000. He has been the author of Principles and Practice of Homeopathic Pharmacy book, as well as uh, Organon of Medicine, Graphical and Commentary Press, and many other publications in various journals and magazines. So here I welcome and hand over the 
session to sir sir over to you thank you dr yashika for very great introductions about me you have made me the great persons now i feel proud uh, to be uh, introduced like that thank you yashika now regarding the session can you uh, put on the uh, slides yeah so uh, most distinguished personality present here today in international homeopathic uh, international homeopathic science congress organized as webinar today dr anil khurana sir had kindly consented to inaugurate this session he is the director general ccrh and chairman board of governors governor of ccrh Dis distinguished speakers dr brian kaplan from england will be joining soon and we have our great master of the organ and of medicines and homeopathic philosophy with us we say the giant personality dr lm khan sir with us and very young friend from nepal our neighboring country dr prakash puniyakal uh, is here with us and of course dr yashika is with us uh, the most dynamic personality i have seen working throughout the uh, day and night every time you call her she will be ready to serve so this is a great wonder for homeopathy that homeopathy will be definitely get benefited with this personality uh it is always in the better interest for development of science to remember the past and pay tributes to their contribution present presentations are thriving on the good samaritan of those who lived their lives to make this universe better place for they are coming off of his spring dr b sahani who began his journey at the most primitive stage of homeopathy where it was not recognized as a system of medicines even in our country with his dedication and love for homeopathy he acquired the legacy of dr henneman to protect and safeguard by practicing in the most religious way his understanding about homeopathic philosophy was outstanding and was considered as the wizard for the king's repertory he had mastered every page when during the time of his death i uh, he used to guide us telling by the page number of the repertory see there see there and you will get the rubrics so this was the his memory and his the whole book was at, at was in his mind dr b sahani has discovered very innovative system of in medicines by transmitting that the medicines from a distance and uh, it is one of the um, uh, things that can be understood as the uh, linking between linking the past and the future and taking the medicines into the space dr jubal kishor the former president of the central council of homeopathy he had very uh, made a very wonderful remarks about dr sahani uh, that apparently the dr b sahani has traveled much beyond dr henneman where the latter advocated transmission of drug energy to the all faction so uh, his insight into the mode of administration of tra by transmitting the medicines from a distance brought him to the be a legendary figure today he is remembered among the hearts of many as we used to listen many folklore about his miraculous cure they have made many nickname about dr bisani some one can talk, uh, talk that he is a langra doctor that because he has treated and cured so many lame patients the paralyzed patients somebody tells that he is the pan who can give you that sun and the office spring because he has 
treated so many sterility cases, azospermia, and like that. So different names were given by the persons who get got benefited differently. And still today, we are getting the patient in our clinic by his name only. They are, they are coming to us. Dr. Sani has treated the cancer in such a such year and which was cured. The generations are now following and they are coming to our clinic. So uh, the ardent follower of single remedy and throughout his life, he advocated practicing the single remedy. He used to put single remedy like a drop in the ocean and demonstrated the miraculous effect instantly. Very wonderful things that we have understood about him. His messages for service, serving science with sincerity has attracted followers around the globe. Today, disciples from and followers used to congregate and decide, uh, decide to form a platform like that of Homeopathic Science Congress, where every year a mela is being performed on the major of the great um, uh, scientist Dr. B. Sahni. This webinar is organized on his death occasion anniversary to mark our homage as well as to keep the lamp of, for learning from the stalwarts. And learning and learning and serving are the best tribute that we can offer to this great soul. Dr. B. Sani was posthumously awarded by the Central Council of Homeopathy uh, for his recognition of his service. And which was received, I, uh, I was being honored on behalf of my father, receiving it the moment to get delivered by the Vice President of India. So it is the eternal realm of the science. So with these words, now I uh, invite our, my, I, I, I'm introducing our inaugurator today, Dr. Anil Khurana, sir. Uh, he had, uh, he, till yesterday, he told me that he definitely is coming, but suddenly this morning, he received a message from uh, the minister who had an uh, urgent meeting is there at 1 p.m. So he is there with the minister, but he has sent a message, uh, a message for us today. Uh, Dr. Kurana, uh, sir, I, will, I have the honor to introduce you, uh, who is presently appointed as the Director General of the Central Council for Research in Homeopathy and is also honored by the Ministry of Ayush to be the chair person, Chairman of the Board of uh, Governor of Central Council of Homeopathy. Dr. Kurana, sir, started his journey in homeopathy by joining as a research assistant in Gen Central Council of Research of, of, for Homeopathy and gradually reached the pinnacle of research career to be honored as the Director General in charge. And the Director General, Dr. Kurana, way of functioning with sincerity and perseverance with sim smiling the simplicity of life has stored in himself the vastness of experience and inspiration for all. And he is the person who is most suited to inaugurate this uh, webinar. And he could not resist his feelings, sentiments, and he has sent a beautiful message for us. And I will request Dr. Yatika to kindly display the message. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Sani, for Sani, inviting me for inaugurating a special webinar for taking homeopathy into space. What I could uh, understood from the theme of the webinar, yes, there is a need for taking homeopathy to great heights building up more and more scientific evidence. Since we are living into an era of ultimate science, we are, we are exploring space. Why can't we take up homeopathy to those heights? Homeopathy is an advanced scientific concept actually. 
it is beyond the realms of today's scientific world as still to be explored on many aspects what i could see in long years of my career there are many unanswered questions about homeopathy and that's why it invites so much so many of controversies so i will request all our scientific minds to join hands do whatever you can do at your own level when you are taking up homeopathy good amount of documentation is required we are coming out with a software database where you will be able to upload well treated case records with documentary evidences and that will build up our testimonials that homeopathy has benefited such kind of diseases where other systems fail homeopathy is not simply white pills it has a rationale behind it the high dilution factor is not a hindrance to its progress it has benefited the mankind since more than 200 years now people are convinced with the effect of homeopathy the only thing we have to prove is how it is working as per the available scientific knowledge of today many scientists have worked on under this particular area of explaining mechanistics behind the action of homeopathic medicine some scientists are called as a nano medicines somebody is talking about quantum physics the hormesis theory the water memory theory but still we are not able to resolve this particular issue on many counts although there are lot of studies of biological activities which have proved beyond doubt that it's not simply a dilution it's not simple water there's much more into this this needs to be explained and i hope in today's deliberations the participants will be immensely benefited from the discussions thank you so much for inviting me and i will love to hear the scientists if i go through those recordings i have an important meeting so i will not be able to stay here for long thank you so much ah uh, thank you dr khurana sir for your very nice deliberations and message and and that you have you are doing such a wonderful now you are making a data bank for all those testimonials this is a very good job and good better future for homeopathy is ahead now for today's program we have our great master our first speaker is dr lm khan sir uh, professor lm khan L stands for Lal, and M stands for M Mohan uh, Muhammad. I used to call him Lion because he looks like a lion. So Lion, L M Khan sir, he is properly known as L M Khan. He passed his D M S under the Council for of Homeopathic System of Medicines from West Bengal in the year 1976, and then in 85 he passed the B H M S graded under. the bihar university in the year 1997 he was awarded md degree under the jaipur university and during his initial year he worked under the guidance of legendary dr jn majumdar gyan majumdar and kanji lal and also dr b n chakravarti he has worked as a associate professor and held the position of professor and head of the department of organ and of medicines chronic disease and psychology in the national institute of homeopathy kolkata and he also had uh, held the post of director in charge 
National Institute of Homeopathy. He is a chair. He was the chairman of the literature committee of CCH. Many valuable books are authored by him, like Ignatia in Cancer, Allergy, Curse uh, of the Civilizations, Prognosis, Kent 12 Observations Illustrated, Wisdom Imponderabilia, X-ray, Wisdom of Sarcodes, Pleasure in Prescribing, Case Perceiving, Know Your Thyself. So many books are there. He has held many honorable membership, like the member of the advisory committee of homeopathy to the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, member of the expert committee on homeopathy uh, to the Ministry of ISM and H India, and board of studies, postgraduate and undergraduate Calcutta, ex chairman, board of studies in homeopathy, attached to the faculty of council for postgraduate studies in medicine in Calcutta University. Fellowship of Homeopathic Association of Malaysia and honorary inspector for the Central Council of Homeopathy. Uh, he was uh, confirmed as the best teacher award, best teacher award. He is a teacher of the teachers in the, by the Society of the Research uh, Society of Homeopathy. Concept of concomitant as an art of prescribing used to, he used to and demonstrate in a simple way is very scientific way. He, just, uh, he established the relationship between the recent scientific concept of synchronicity of Carl Jung, non-local concept of David Bohm, and learn linear and complexity concept is utilized in homeopathy art of prescribing and use of the rare medicines. This is a wonderful con 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 combinations of all the things. So he has tried to bring the entire platform of homeopathy under the one platform. So uh, with these words, these are very few introductions. He deserves so many words. The words seems to be limited but uh, I have my great regard and he is my teacher, he is my guide, he is my philosopher, he is my everything. Sir, I welcome you in this webinar and I request you to uh, present your uh, lectures for the today's seminar. It will be a blessing, it will be a graceful occasion for all the participants of this webinar. Over to Dr. L.M. Khan, sir. Sir, please turn your audio on. Sir, audio is off. Upar me hoga? Upar me hai? Awaaz aa gai? Aa gai, aa gai. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Saini Saab. <clears throat> I appreciate your feeling and honor to your father. We lost today. I am thankful to Dr. Also Shubhas Singh, who is still getting the full honor to his father, like Dr. Saini Saab. In present day, he remember his father, his contribution in the homeopathic system of medicine. I appreciate from my core of heart. I appreciate the nucleus of this organization and webinars. Mr. Manish Jain of B. Jain Publications, Yashika Ji and many others, those who are going to making this seminar full of energy, full of knowledge and uh, full of educations. In present day, we have got epidemic of webinar, but among them, Dr. Saini Saab organization, an international seminar where a big shot is going to be delivered their experience 
regarding the homeopathy. He, he asked me, and he is asking to me is my honor, especially related to his memory of his father. Today I am going to just say about something regarding the importance of the organ and its use in bedside. As Sinisab gives the beautiful name is James of the organ. James always going to be utilized, not for the show. Organ is not a theoretical book, not a show of, not just to pass VHMS, rather is a full of documented, practical experience of a man like Hanuman, who always his base, all his contribution from the experience, experience and experience only. I am just going to share a few points from the organ. In fact, from Aphrodite 1 to 291 of the 6th edition and 5th edition up to the 294 is a full of bedside, full of clinical approach. My friend, there are certain approach in organon, among them is one of the most important approach is the clinical approach. Clin clinical approach is the whole history of the medicine. The first, the man who prefer the bedside or phenomenological approach, attitude to watch the patient, to prescribe the patient was the father of medicine, Hippocrates. Hippocrates, in his place, a very big tree is called Planter Orientalis. Very big tree. Hippocrates sit under this tree and ask his disciple to bring his case histories. I am insisting, my friend, the case history. Honeyman approach for the perfect case taking. Hippocrates perfect case taking. And lastly, I appreciate Dr. Dhavle Sahab, who insisting the case perceiving as well as the writing of case taking is very good. It is written documentation for the love affairs of patient and his diseases, appreciated by Hippocrates, as we call phenomenological attitude towards the patient. And after that, Hippocrates, Honeyman, Honeyman proceed this clinical approach, phenomenological approach, some in extended form. He considered with this approach, as he discussed from nine after the nine to sixteen, holism in the medicine, not the part, rather patient as a whole. 
its theoretical part from 19 to 16 then after that 189 to 193 then approach where the holism holism and only holism maintaining holistic approach to eradication of the diseases from the patient as a person as a whole is one of the rarest contribution in the history of medicine i must honor to mention the name of dr sambul hanuman his approach one of his case with a wash of women lady come to the treatment of our master regarding his many complaint hanuman the master for holistic approach he was the dhoban washer woman and prescribed brain yalba not for her disease complain rather for the patient as a whole of washer woman here i just giving a one solution that hanuman after this observation the importance of brain yarn especially washer woman remedy cpi is one of the additional medicine this is approach we call phenomenological approach there is no question of bias no prejudice at all the beauty of hanuman and phenomenological approach in his another case of watts watts was treated by hanuman and his student insisting him to just tell me the name of the remedy which you prescribe boss hanuman said watch 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 a long story i'm just going to make a minimized form that hanuman was prescribed phenomenologically chamomile for the watts today we have got in our mind watts our just mind to prejudice towards the tuga medurinum all psychotic medicine etc etc the phenomenological medicine is going to taught you whatever may be the name of the disease the phenomena is very important for prescribing and the phenomena of chamomile is much more marked in this case of what hanuman choose chamomile this is the beauty of understanding of phenomenological prescribing or clinical bedside approach which nowadays i am trying my level best very hard to introduce in my webinar about the phenomenological medicine importance of organ and material medical i too request to sahani sahab and many other organizers especially as i call nucleus manishian to organize seminar to make aware people especially young generation should be going to be aware regarding the importance of phenomenological medicine this is from the organ and organ and i am going to touch few of the symptom which is uh, must be a holistic one i am not considering the disease not to the part but the part who consider patient as a whole this approach of homeopathic medicine is a really a contribution of uh, homeopathy the next thing which i like to share from Afrozam 110. Hanuman insists 
the importance of proving simiria was present not only on the time of hippocrates but before the time of hippocrates similia as is a nature's law so when nature is going to persist starting from the last to the destruction of the world similia is going to be persist because it is a nature's law it is always associated with the nature's and nature is going to be complementary with the similia principle my friend this similia principle having a backbone a spinal cord is the drug proof hippocrates know the importance of similia he used one thing i can say here hippocrates was a physician who has got a very limited knowledge of medicine but is much more knowledge of accessory circumstances know about the soil effect of the soil air and he wrote a small book related to the air water and places only correction of the air places and water making many type of the diseases is going to be cured in the hand of an uh, hippocrates the father of medicine my friend this clinical approach without the good knowledge of medicine the, the least knowledge of the medicine hippocrates is going to be claimed as a father of medicine father of medicine having a lacking lacking the similia should be completed with the another similarity this is one of the important factor in the hand of hippocrates one more thing hippocrates claim that it is the insight this medicatris naturi is important for healing the person patient heal thyself insights form their immune system it was a genus of animal who claim that is not enough the vis medicatis naturi the internal power of the medicine to eradicate the diseases where the myzem is going to be involved animal himself fail after 12 years of ex experiment he came to a conclusion that medicine is very very much helpful in the cases where the patient's dynamic internal uh, power vital force vital principle immune system is going to be overburdened with the chronic diseases that is miasmatic diseases so it required anti miasmatic which is the lacking in the hand of the father of medicine hippocrates in between time from the hanuman to the father of hippocrates is the midline that was the time of the parasolsus who effort for similia principle to give doctrine of signature a very rough it rough similarity between the doctrine of the signature and the diseases which is not very complete in the hand of history shows in the hand of funiman is going to be completed come back to the after some 110 Under ten, Hanuman said about the origin of homeopathic material and the contribution of poisoning to developing homeopathic material. I'm just today is going to 
just touch the importance of poisoning symptom. Hanuman called it the rudiment of pure materiality. Just listen, my friend, and just note the the language Hanuman used in the organ. Rudiment of pure materiality, or the raw. This will taught me to prescribe arsenic. This rudiment of homeopathic material medica, the original form of the homeopathic material medica, the non -co uh, complicated. And after a long period of honeymoon, the history shows the most educated man in the history of medicine. They are going to learning some different way and understanding of homeopathic materia medica, as we call the rebound effect. A system where we are going to choose the symptom from the poisoning for prescribing. If the poisoning is going to be, symptom of the poisoning is going to be clinically confirmed day by day till now. I think they are the one of the very important symptoms for prescribing. Clinical confirmation is uh, very important. In hope in future, our materia medica is going to be colored, having a different face. And this face is under the influence of the rudiment of materia medica, that is, rebound effect of the medicine, poisoning of the medicine, poisonous effect of the medicine, poisoning uh, observation in the hospitals. Among them, I used to prescribe arsenic on the basis of this thirst and burden. My arsenic is not very famous for fastidiousness. My arsenic, simple arsenic, is going to be considered in the most crit uh, critical condition of the patient on the basis of the poisoning effect of the arsenic. That is a small quantity of thirst repeatedly with a very small interval. Small quantity, small interval. I ordered my guru, Dr. Gyan Yundar, the man who was the highest good knowledge at that time of the surgery, medicine, and science, was watched to the patient of this clinical poisoning symptoms. Come back to another aphorism. Especially related to uh, some point of doses. And after that, I am going to discuss about one action of homeopathic medicine in the proving and its value of the prescribing. I'm just going to touch only the prescribing beauty from the organ of the medicine. My friend, and that is alternating action of a medicine. Hanuman was too serious to study his prover. When observing minute to minutest observation, which is very helpful to the development of 
rational system of medicine, the art which is based on the humanity, need a suffering humanity, homeopathic system of medicine. This need and requirement he noted in the proving, as we call alternating action of the medicine. My friend here, I say, or uh, I can say that Honeyman, Honeymanian proving is one of the best proving, charmful proving, having an approach to holistic approach, individualistic approach, Buddhism in the medicine. And here, this alternating action is noted. May I ask to the profession today, how many provers of the proving society is going to be noted in their provings of this alternating action? I feel very sorry, my friend. One is the provings is going to be very reduced. If it is very Hanumanian, they lost the soul of Hanuman, the spirit of the Hanuman, as this alternating action, and many others also. He proving he himself devoted his family member, his friends, even this alternating action is a lacking, lacking a lot in the TFLN as well as the hearing also. Lacking here means not, not up to the date of Honeyman's feeding, Honeyman's contribution. What a beauty Honeyman noted in the organ, especially in aphorism 115. In 115, Hanuman was very much cautious, especially related to the prescribing. His approach in the drug proving is more towards the bedside, as I am going to discuss about this alternating action. A action of primary stage of a proving of a medicine. Look like secondary stage or secondary symptom. Again, I am repeat my friend. Alternating action is the action found in the primary stage of the proving or primary action of the medicine not secondary, but look like secondary addition, but it never be a secondary action. What we need, we need to understand this primary and secondary action. We should read Materia Medica Pura very seriously. Here I just give you one example, the importance of Second reaction. Please look after the last few symptoms of staphysagaria in the material digger. Pura. He gives the importance of second reaction in the prescribing, my friend, prescribing. Honeyman mostly very serious with the prescribing. But unfortunate for the post Hermanian stalwarts and the generation, those who are not giving much importance to the Hermanian's writing, especially organ of the nature. That's why I choose few organs, aphorism, where Hermanian giving importance to the action of the remedy for the prescription and that is altered. I'm giving one example of the secondary uh, action regarding the staphysic area. Please read it. 
another which i am going to share with you the importance of alternating action i am just seeing this alternating action is a one action full action in the primary action of the meditation i'll give you one example of agnesia in agnesia incredible changeability extreme changeability or at one time he jokes in jest and another he is going to be like removed this is opposite both are opposite but found in primary action if any symptom found in primary action both look like primary and secondary action just like just as i am going to discuss about the ignatia amara i am saying about the very constipation too much severe constipation with pressing out of the rectum and after that the diarrhea so diarrhea and constipation very constipated motion as you know the constipation of the brainia is always going to be alternate in the primary action with the loose stool this is brain i will give you one more example about the belladonna the tilism means full of mouth collection of the water and great dryness of the mouth mm -hmm. this is belladonna is going to be alternate my friend this there are many medicine if you go through the homeopathic materia medica pura where hanimen claim that it is a alternating action in the footnote problem is that may i request to my profession honorable profession that please read homeopathic materia medica pura special reference to the footnote there are two footnotes one is given by hanuman another is their translator or maybe editor etc etc but my children please read the notes of hanuman regarding he is giving the importance of secondary action he give the importance of alternating action etc etc i choose here only the importance of prescribing on alternating action few cases especially i am going to when prescribe brainia you know that brainia constipation so hard so painful that patient is not able to tolerate sometimes tears the rectum in in a region erosion after the passing so proving said large hard as if burn followed by the patient has got loose stool my friend the symptom is mostly commonly found in the later stage of the life especially in old ages prescribing symptom very similar to brainia alba i prescribe brainia alba you prescribe brainia alba within few days patient complain you i have got no improvement at all after few hours no improvement of your medic after few days no improvement but it is the confidence which you will get from the materia medica pura as it is a contribution of a man 
whom we call Hanuman, the man who based on the experience. His life is full of experience. His system is going to be an outcome of the experience, not fallacy, not uh, prejudice, not anything. He believed only experiment and experience. Brainya was given, and in the name of the Hanuman, and the effort of the Hanuman, the man simply said that, my friend, this is a case of Brainya. Why Brainya is not working? The same history in the background. I just like to go back to the history of homeopathy. That Hanuman once was very much loudly speaking, claiming the law of Similia. But gradually he found that his Similia principle is a lacking. And the lacking, because there is something which is missing Hanuman in the history. He watched the history of the every patient which he saw he claiming treatment and found there is a one obstacle to recovery, a disease. That is the he gave the name of the mysum. The mysum obstacles make him to study homeopathic materia medica as well as philosophy and the proving near about 12 years. He specified specific some of the medicine from the chronic diseases, eradication of the chronic diseases, which he claimed in the two parts and published 54 medicine, which is especially useful when the cases is going to be mixed with the effect of the chronic miasm. Come back to the alternating action. Similarly, Hanuman's observation taught him that when you prescribe on the basis of alternating action, as we prescribe in case of constipation of Brahina. I just, when you go through the another approach in the Hanuman's organ of the medicine, 251 of Zizu, where he said, discuss about the therapeutic utility of alternating action. Therapeutic utility of alternating action means when you are going to prescribe a medicine on the basis of alternating action, if the medicine is not going to work, not giving any re response, then the same medicine as Brainia or any medicine, the same potency, either 200 or 30, must be repeated. Must be repeated. Same potency, same medicine. This is the beauty of understanding of homeopathic materia medica pura and understanding of alternating action. Giving your one more dose, is stimulant as a brainia, the same potency and the same dose and the same. If you have good repetition, it should be repeated at the same. But mostly we consider the same medicine and same potency. After giving, the brainia is going to be reactivated. Awaken is going to be a, a new jagran. in the patient's economy, and the patient is going to be cured. My friend, I have an approach of homeopathic system of medicine for prescribing concomitant symptom. I get much success. I gone. I give honor to the Hanuman 153, and the concept of the concomitant by 
boring questions i remember one case of severe headache now we ca call the headache headache of or migraine a lady having a migraine she was treated by many medicines the result is not very perfect not suitable not helpful satisfactory because homeopathic physician who allopathic physician who they are going to partially understand the human personality as i told you the phenomenological attitude of prescribing the individualistic attitude of the prescribing the bedside attitude of the prescribing because since are only head we are not going to patient who has got head consideration of the holistic consideration or holistic approach when i go through the case taking and i found the patient has got a tendency of very hard costive stool followed by a very loose stool a constant rhythm a rhythm as a concomitant to the migraine i choose brain prescribed brain and the patient is not giving very satisfactory result within 2 to 3 or week i give one more dose of brain 12 in this case i prescribe 12 12 mit a, a potency which i learned from the opd of calcutta homeopathic medical college the 12 brainia 12 rust x in the hand of dr pc pal a giant prescriber of calcutta homeopathic medical college my friend these people are not only the master of the prescribing with the indication rather uh, indication especially related to the potency and doses as this case was prescribed by me on the basis of alternating action so i repeat one more dose of brainia 12 and it's a wonderful magical result is going to be seen my friend as i insist here only because that importance of alternating action we are not using in our clinical practice like bedside approach because we could not understand the beauty of prescribing alternating action a patient who is suffering from a viral fever very acute condition and the patient had got very severe dryness from mouth to the throat so severe dryness and alternating with the tyrosine means too much saliva full of mouth saliva is going to be alternative with dryness of throat and mouth i isolated this symptom from the viral infection the diagnosis of the case there are lots of symptom but this particular symptom of alternating is in i choose for prescribing belladonna i give belladonna one in one single dose and the result is within few hours patient has got no response at all 
I give one more dose of Belladonna to burn him. And the Belladonna is going to be working peacefully. And the patient within a, with the placebo, within a one or two days, I think in two days, the viral fever is going to be subside without complications. Appetite is good. Letharginess, no letharginess. And well being is going to be maintained as before his health. You know that this is a beautiful understanding of autism too. Ideal cure, highest ideal cure. Near to the ideal cure. Sim similarly, our prescription, when we say about I am just saying about uh, one case I also remember of uh, the Nagani Grisha. This changeableness is very important. Prominent symptom of the patient. Laugh, weep, excited, depressed. Materia Medica shows this is a one of the action we call alternative action. The case was bleeding. Meteorite. In this bleeding meteorite, not no is is going to be, no medicine is going to be response. Patient call me on phone, ask me about some medicine. I simply said you forget of your meteorite or menorite. Don't say about the diagnosis of the disease. You just say me about that. What is the away from this meteorite? Yeah. You just watch. What is the peculiar thing? What is the uh, uh, what is the common characteristic you will find in your daughter? She just laughs. Before this is said, she is going to be cry to help her baby. I mean, daughter regarding this. Menorrhagia. When I asked, she told me, she said that. One very funny thing I found, doctor, the pay, my daughter is very, uh, just like a, uh, making a mad like situation. Sometimes she laugh, to laugh, when she's starting to cry. And to cry. Sometimes she is going to be, say, very depressed. Suddenly is going to be very cheerful. This mental attitude of the baby, my daughter is going to be very changeable. This is the symptom which I consider for prescribe. For my own understanding, I ask that uh, is there any person in your family, those who are using cigarette smoke or smoking cigarette? She said, yes, yes, my husband. You just ask your daughter that she like the smoking of cigarette or dhua or smoke or not. No, doctor, she is going to be vomited. If she smell the smoke of the cigarette, she used to vomit. This is for my own understanding and confirmation, but is enough changeability, changeability. From the varying anger and irritable attitude, a very mild description. This changeability is one of the strong indications of Ignatia Amara. 
found in alternative reaction. I give 200 in all section. And I said that you do one thing. Give one dose of olfaction. If she is going to be controlled, is okay. Otherwise, wait 15 to 20 minutes. If you would get no result at all, give one more olfaction. She gave, and after 15 to 20 minutes like that, she called me that uh, is not medicine is not responding. And then I asked his action of... Uh, changeability or in, in cheerfulness with depression, etc. Is, is similarly the same way. And I ask to give one more all fiction. Why I choose all fiction? Only because of that. The patient's condition is in in menses, period. As per the Hanuman instruction, the most important condition for homeopathic prescribing is during pregnancy. And the most worst time of the prescri prescribing during menstruation. I maintain. And this maintenance Give me a pleasure as well as a different angle of giving potency on all section. Where Honeyman does not like to prefer, feel happy to prescribe during the time of the menstruation, better to give few doses of all section. This is one of the best contribution of Honeyman in potency to use in all sections. All factions, Honeyman use in his life. Boningishan use in his life. And many other physicians, I too, humble physician of homeopathic system of medicine, using in different places, different way to prescribe on all sections. Even in a case of carcinoma, all fiction gave me a very pleasurable result. I'm not saying cure. My friend, it is now high time to appreciate Dr. Sahini and the nucleus Manishian and their association their associated friends to raise the honeyman voice, clinical practice of homeopathy, and awareness from all over the globe is a very a work of a very noble soul. I salute the soul of senior Saini Saha, the father of Saini Sahib, the grandfather of Amit Saini Sahib, with thanks and two thanks to remember me to choose the subject of organon and their practical utility, as you call gem. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your mesmerizing talk today, sir. We were so much engrossed with the words. Every word was speaking something new philosophy for us. And I am very grateful to you, sir, for presenting such a nice and beautiful presentation for all of us. Uh, now, uh, we will be coming to our next speaker. Uh, Dr. Yasika is here. Yes, sir, I'm here, but actually, I think Dr. Kaplan has not joined yet. So, uh, so we can uh, start with Dr. Prakash. Yeah, uh, I, Dr. Prakash, are you ready? 
Yeah, I am ready. Okay. So, uh, before the doc, the doctor Bernard Kaplan has to join yet. Uh, I uh, meanwhile will continue the session, and our next speaker is our young friend from Nepal. Our neighboring state, uh, country, and I'm going to introduce Dr. Prakash Kuniyakal. He has completed his BSMS degree from the BA, uh, BRA Bihar University, with his keen passion for serving. He is actively involved both in medical professions and social activities. He is very much instrumental in keeping the and maintaining the recognition of homeopathy in the country of Nepal. Presently, he is serving as homeopathic physician at the Bhaktpur Homeopathic Clinic. He is also serving as general manager of RP Foundation and founder general secretary of Mathureswar Agricultural Cooperative. He is the general secretary of the Nepal Homeopathic Health Organization and life member of Asian Homeopathic Medical League. He has participated in various seminars, symposium, conference related to the homeopathy. He has published some of the articles in different news and media and working for upliftment of homeopathy in Nepal and major responsibility for preparing document to Alternative Medicines Department and Health Ministry, Government of Nepal, as well as other organizations voluntarily. Dr. Prakash is very actively involved in Rotary functions, and he is involved as a rot Rotary Rotractor, sister concern of the Rotary since 2009 as a charter president. And then he was elected president of the Rotary Club of Panoti in Kathmandu and participated on the Rotary International Convention in 2019 at the Germany also. So widely traveled persons and widely very sincere and dedicated persons for the homeopathy. Dr. Prakash, you are the gems for the homeopathy in your country and we bless you with the future of your uh, future, uh, bright future ahead. So with this introduction, I request you to start your presentations for today. Your uh, Dr. Yasika, his PowerPoint has to be, uh, yeah. Okay. Is it Thank fine, you. sir? Uh, Prakash, yes. you can uh, run the, in the, below this slide, you say the next slide, so you can move the slide cursor yourself. Okay, sir. Thank you. So you Thank start. you very much. Dr. Yeah. Yomke Sani, sir, for giving this opportunity uh, and my uh, wonderful introduction. I am so much blessed for this uh, introduction. Uh, today, I am going to uh, present a uh, simple presentation about the life of Dr. Bandhu Sani, who is great scientist, great doctor. Uh, and the presentation starts now. There is one tale which says, from pain and penury to pinnacle of success. Similarly, Emmanuel Kent also says, we are not rich by what we possess, but by what we can do without. Dr. B. Sani was born in a family of peasant servants and laborers. Dr. Bandhu Sani came from a very poor cultivator family where parents found it difficult to maintain the family with their petty income. As a child, he was sent to work as domestic servants. They was to do petty work of cleaning and doing domestic work. Tired evening was spent with children in the family studying. He was with curiosity and tried to learn with self-motivation. Night is spent with imagination for acquiring knowledge. He was extraordinary intelligence and zeal for acquiring knowledge. 
He has great thirst for acquiring knowledge, which becomes unquenchable. It became attracted to the notice of late Munshi Udit Narayan of Rajnagar in Darmanga, who is well known for his love for learning and magnanimity. Under his love and care, he lived with him and completed his matriculation in 1942 from Rajnagar. Same year, his father died, leaving him brokenhearted. He is also a firebrand nationalist. He then sought admission in IA in CM College in Darbanga. The freedom movement of 1942 of India made him realize that no sacrifice could be considered greater than one done for the sake of one's country. He left his studies and took active part in the freedom movement and was jailed on several occasions. It was during this period he was attracted towards homeopathy, which to him held promises of new awakening in the poor masses. Centillier of New Dawn. Mind got, mind got infilled with passion to bring health and happiness to the suffering humanity. Self-study through books made him to enter into the arena of homeopathy. He is a man of indefatigable spirit and peerless character. Dr. Sawney again took off his studies and then did his graduation from CM College Darbanga afterwards. Afterwards, he joined basic training school at Patna in 1948. Soon after finishing his BT course, he was married to Dr. Sumitra Sawney, who too had done her basic training from the same school. Later, both of them were appointed assistant teacher in basic school at Kolhanta Patroni in the district of Darbanga, BR, India. And then uh, the responsibility was shared. Life was becoming shared with service, family, and his own passion. No compromise at the cost of his other. During this period, his first son was born on 17th September 1952, is Dr. Yamke Sani, sir. He became the proud father of three sons and one daughter. Uh, the homeopathy was the passion and hobby to Dr. B. Sani. At no stage of his career, Dr. Sani's interest in homeopathy fledged. Encouraged with his interest, made him complete his MD in homeopathy from Sathi Homeopathic Medical College in Darbhanga. This encouraged him to establish a charitable homeopathic dispensary under the social education scheme. His wife has remained his constant companion in his entire interview ever since. He is a voracious reader. He is born to read. Dr. Sani was always in quest to discover new phenomena of nature. His loving, his love for learning always helped him climb fresh height. He kept his studies continued and while in service, he did his post-graduation twice. He did his MA first in philosophy and then in sociology. Survival for life, learning for self. He competed for a gazetted post in BR Public Service Commission and it was during this period of his service, he was posted to different part of Bihar. While serving with the government responsibility, pastime was spent reading and practicing homeopathy. Reputation as homeopath spreaded in different part of the state. His reputation was spreading all over the state at the time. He usually followed the Hanumanian and Kent spirit. He is ardent believer in philosophy of Dr. Hanuman. Practical clinical approach with the use of Kent repertory shown path of repertory to be adopted as most practical way. He is philosopher of Hanuman and he follows the Kent repertory. He has faith in energy medicine with curiosity. Curiosity, how homeopathic medicine acts. He has, he's always curious about the action of homeopathic medicine. What should be the way of administrating energy like medicine of homeopathy? He's constantly dwelling in the mind about that. Which 
result in discovery of the new theory a uh, discovery on the new theory called transmission of homeo drug energy in recognition for his invaluable research many academic bodies and institution for homeopathic science has conferred upon him honorary degree and fellowship is a rare gift to the medical world in general and homeopathy in particular a life lived to discover dr sani extended the philosophy of hanemann his discovery of remote sensing technique of administrating dro drugs as against the conventional method of administration of drugs through mouth in 1967 dr sani added a new dimension to the mode of application of this dynamic medicine property by applying them from a distance by using the natural belonging of the patient on the laurel of a physician or machia with varied experimentation on thousands of patient of various category it is now proved beyond doubt that dynamic medicine of homeopathy can be transmitted from a distance dr sani's discovery is now a established system with thousands of followers all across the globe apparently the author dr b sani has traveled much beyond animan which is written by dr jugal kishor in forward uh, in the book transmission of homeopathy drug energy from distance this book was published and then it went into three edition and this book is now also available in hindi now afterwards foundation of research institute of sani drug transmission and homeopathy to enhance the research education and clinical service rist was formed in 1970 rist was registered under the society registration act 1860 with the initial activity of propagation research and training through non formal basis the institute is now marching ahead with healthcare through drug transmission by its various free clinics spread it over the country dr b sani traveled extensively to share his valuable discovery within the country outside the country his students are now distributed worldwide his efforts has brought tremendous response from the masses and the intellectuals alike and proved the efficacy of his principle and methods of treatment beyond doubts he is a great discoverer with a great soul with caring hearts he is popular among patients colleagues and all he was elected president of the homeopathic medical association of india br state branch for two terms later on he, he was elevated to the national post of vice president of the homeopathic medical association of india he sincerity and caliber in homeopathy government of br nominated him as the member of the br state homeopathic board he served the board with his intelligence to develop it to the extent of making academic nature of homeopathy more effective system of medicine dr sani was invited on many occasion at various seminars to present his paper in 1977 he presented his paper at international homeopathy congress lhmi held at vigyan bhavan new delhi this was introduction of his subject of drug transmission to the homeopathic fraternity of the old learned delegates from all over the old listened to the new discoverer and was appreciated widely for his new exploration in the field of medicine he has presented his paper in the indian science congress on three occasions he is also chairman of the scientific sessions where uh, impressed with his presentation and delivered remarks in appreciation his paper was also presented at international homeopathy congress at kolkata in 1989 and in many of the national and regional seminars he has served med medical institution in period capacity he was visiting professor to the bs medical college and hospital at patna he was made vice chairman to the institute of healing and alternative therapy at patna 
he also served in the national editorial board of history of indian homeopathy dr sani love for books his vast collection of books on the subject of medicine alone has now become a treasure house of knowledge in the form of library at the research institute of sani drug transmission and homeopathy his collection of rare books are still stored in this library is interested in journalism also his interest in propagating initiated in him to write at regular intervals as such he took up the journalism and founded publication of two journals one in hindi and in and another in english he was founder editor of quarterly homeopathic journal homeotarang homeotarang has credit to be the first journal published in hindi from bihar now english edition is published separately which has been accredited as peer review journal he is a legend in the field of medicine and is remembered in various stories of cure his interest in healing the suffering of ailing patient was widely appreciated a man with heart full of passion for helping to relieve the suffering can be well imagined as patient from all over the country used to come to him for their treatments he offered his services to many of the medical centers and has the and has the distinction of organizing many medical camps to bring his discovery made available to the needy poor patients in the remote villages he traveled from village to village to help the poor still today he is remembered for his services dr san is thirst for helping and propagating the truth of art of healing encouraged him to travel abroad he went to switzerland germany france england belgium usa and other countries where he was welcomed as scientist he also taught many students during his stay at various countries at san francisco he worked with aids patient and tried to discover the cure for it he helped establishment of healing center for of san francisco his health gradually started succumbing to the pressure of work paralyzed after a cerebral stroke to bed in 1990 being helped with his own discovery he lived on the bed for more than 7 years still lying on his sick bed he used to deliver lesson on his subject to the entire disciple who used to come to seek consultation for their difficulties he started a weekly studies program being managed from his bedside recognizing his services to the homeopathy and his discovery dr sani was felicitated posthumously central council of homeopathy a government of india statutory body during its silver jubilee celebration in 1999 vice president of india dr yashti sharma presented the memento to dr sani dr b sani which was received by his son Dr. Yam K. Sani sir, a grateful council paid its homage to this saint by honoring and recognizing his services. He has left for his heavenly abode. Dr. Bandhu Sani left for his heavenly abode on 26th October 1997. Dr. B. Sani enjoyed the great task of ameliorating the pains of humanity through his. remote sensing trait technique of distant application of medicine he is variously described as a healer saint masiya and a scientific uh, and a scientist healer dr b sani a down to the earth person shall remain alive in the hearts of millions every moment of life was not lived in vain thank you if you have any question you can find me at uh, @ku_prakash at hotmail.com or my whatsapp number is plus +9779851004779 thank you very much thank you dr prakash for your very 
sentimental and emotional presentations. Uh, I was just overwhelmed listening to the uh, about my father from you, the young generations, and I feel that the sentiment has been transmitted to you also and uh, the neighboring country of the Nepal also. And because it was a truth, it was a reality, he will live, this thing will live, he will live among the heart of everyone. Uh, and uh, you definitely, you have done a great job by compiling uh, his life history. And uh, I think that in the place where you are in Kathmandu and the place where Dr. Sahani's life was started, it is very close by it's the border of the Nepal. Yeah. So you have imbibed many of the spirit and you have understood many of the things about Dr. Sahani. Definitely you can explore more into his life. Thank you very much, Thank Dr. Prakash. Thank you, sir. Now I request uh, Dr. Yasika ji. Uh, Dr. Yasika ji, you are in the room. Dr. Yasika ji. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, Dr. Kaplan uh, has not reverted yet and he has joined, not joined. Please let me know what to do. I have asked Manish sir also to call him. <laughs> yes, sir. There is no revert yet, so I'll confirm from Manish sir once again and then I will uh, confirm you. By the time we can have any questions or uh, something, uh, if somebody wants to discuss. Uh, that box is uh... I'm looking into the chat box. Question is that, will it be uploaded in the YouTube? Yes, definitely it will be uploaded. And uh, I think by evening or tomorrow morning, you will be may see this uh, again, repeat of this, because listening to Dr. Khan requires much patience and uh, sincerity so that you can know more because his voice was such a uh, inspiring joining the philosophy along with the practical experience that he has demonstrated it is very unique uh, presentations Uh, I think uh, I don't find any more questions here. So anyone can have a question hour till uh, Dr. Brian Kaplan uh, joins. We are waiting for him to get connected. So, uh, uh, Manish sir is trying to connect. Maybe some technical issue is there with it at his end. We we'll, we can try to connect him tomorrow if uh, there is a possibility. And uh, there is a question, sir. Uh, can you please uh, explain short a few cases for increasing our knowledge? What you say, sir? Doctor Dr. Neetu wants to know if you can share a case for increasing the knowledge. Of any doctor, of any case of Dr. B. Sahani, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yes. Sir. Yeah, that uh, what uh, Dr. B. Sahani has discovered, uh, as you all know, uh, that what is homeopathic medicines? Just uh, if you try to think about the homeopathic medicines, you can understand uh, why Dr. Hany, uh, Dr. Sahani was uh, provoked to think about transmitting the medicines. When you look into the homeopathic potency, potentized medicines, any of the potentized medicines which is beyond 6 potency to 12 potency, not a single molecule of the original medicines is present in the water or the alcohol where the, as a vehicle. So what, uh, what, is, what we are using? We are using the spirit 
spirit like things that uh, you can compare this spirit like uh, in our body physical body this the material body that we see we call ourselves alive life so when you see the life you see the life uh, because you are active your motions is there activity is there that means you cannot see the life directly you are seeing observing the life indirectly and the same way homeopathic medicines are like that in the water or in the alcohol the medicines are there and you can see the medicine you cannot see the medicines but it is action only action is speaks the life is is uh, made known to us by the action and uh, homeopathic medicines is also known by the way of action and definitely this morning dr kurana sir has very much uh, said that lot of the scientific explanations are there quantum philosophy uh, water uh, 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 more therapy so many understandings are coming up uh, they are only the plausible and hypothetical and experience but not a exact, exact explanations about the homeopathic medicines so science is yet to reach to feel and uh, provide meaning for how the homeopathic medicines work but it works the same way why we are alive but we are alive this is true we are alive but how why we are alive what is there which ha, which is make, which is making us to live and survive this is very important and similar way the homeopathic medicine is alive dr henneman has very rightly described about the uh, life as well as the medicines and the medicines uh, and why he tried to treat uh, think about the using potentized the medicines like the 30 potency 200 potency 70 small decimal 50 millisimal so many potency came up later on it is just a progressive state of the homeopathy but why why he thought why what was the things that made him to uh, ma- uh, bring the medicines and dilute the medicines to such a great extent right from the beginning he was practicing and you go into the uh, hanimans uh, literature uh, his lesser writing there are the case history you can read the case history and you can see the, how dr hanimen was prescribing medicine in his initial approach to the homeopathy he was taking one drop of the medicines and putting in a glass full of the water and only giving one uh, spoon to the patient and then throwing out all the water and then again adding it and this was the this was the things that he had understood why it was why it was if you ask this question to yourself you can get the answer because dr henneman was very much uh, aware about the similarity the laws this how the law of the similia can be applied now the medicine has to be similar with the life so how it can be similar with the life medicine has to become invisible like the life because life is invisible and visible by the action so medicine also has to be become invisible and it has to be visible by the action this was the things i concept i what i have understood from the many of the writings of dr henneman in the lesser writing as well as in the organ and of the medicine that many places i have understood like this that ki dr henneman exactly wanted to translate the law of the similia on the human personality and and with the medicines also the similarity has to be at the both end so similar to the life principle similar to the invisible invisible life requires invisible medicines invisible life requires invisible medicines this is great concept that uh, you can think and you can believe like that so he tried to make the medicines as dilute as dilute he started diluting diluting to bring up to the level where it becomes invisible and you see and now the hundreds of year has passed now and the efficacy of the homeopathy is greatly recognized worldwide there are so many cures worldwide the one thing was that how these medicines can be 
administered, how to give the invisible medicines to the um, um, uh, uh, to the persons where there are no molecules, nothing is there, and it has to be put into the mouth. Is it? Do you feel that it is okay? I think Dr. Henneman was not okay with that, was not satisfied with that, because he wrote in a form number 283, but, uh, thinking about how to use and administer and give the medicines to the patient. He said that because uh, it can be put into the mouth, okay, because it is traditionally followed, it is traditionally followed, it is everyone where using the medicines to be swallowed, put into the mouth, swallow the mouth, uh, pills and drugs to, into the, and to be digested. Do you feel that these medicines require digestions? It simply starts acting as soon as it comes into the dynamic pattern of the human life. So this is one possibility. Another possibility was that it may be put through the smell. He talked about the olfactions or rub on the skin. And with this also he was not satisfied. And he said that he has compared in the footnotes you, you can read. The olfaction is better than uh, oral medicines. Olfaction means smelling is better than the um, or putting, swallowing or putting into the mouth. Okay. So because the time and the scientific information was limited, he thought beyond that. Then he started comparing the system with other system of the medicine. He studied about the mesmerism. Uh, mesmerism. And in 291, he said that mesmerism, action of the homeopathic medicines may be similar to the action of the mesmerism. Why he said this? Only because mesmerism is just passing the, some energy to the other persons without any contact. Without any contact. This was very great thought. And this at this point of understanding, Dr. Stahani, he thought, why I should not try transmitting medicines from a distance? And in the very beginning of it, uh, I see at that point I was a very small child in 1967 itself. He was a reputed practitioner from uh, patients coming from the different corner of the uh, Bihar, of the different elements, and they used to come around our house. It was a residential clinic for us. And lot of the people coming in the morning, they were here. And they used to uh, come for, not have to get the pills or the bag of the medicines, full of the bag. After listening to the patient, he used to put one drop into the mouth of the patient at that time, one drop, and then come after one month, no compromise, no compromise, come after one month. This was, I heard many a time, and the patient went back and returned with more miraculous results. And with these understandings, gradually, gradually, he started experimenting with the patient. The first of all, he took the hair from the patient and he brought the medicines in contact with it and he used to ask the patient, "How? what you are feeling now? The patient used to respond in positive or negative way and with this continued experimentation, he was convinced that these medicines can be transmitted from a distance. And since 1967 onward, he has not given any single medicine to the mouth or in the olfaction or in the sun. He was transmitting till the end of his life. And with this he became more popular, more mysterious and more controversial also. In the beginning it was very difficult for the people to understand and uh, accept him as a, a healer. But later on, with the seeing the results, because the results speaks, only with the results you can uh, you can understand things. So people got convinced and gradually uh, he, he has to face many criticisms from his own fraternity, the homeopaths. They were also against him, but later on 
several conscious and very conscientious homeopaths they came close to him learned about that he heard him and then started experimenting with him and he was recognized uh, gradually recognized so recognitions do not come in a day and in the same way dr henneman was also not recognized earlier he was criticized and discouraged but later on the entire world had accepted henneman and similarly dr sahani is also on the same path of getting recognized so this is the journey this is the journey now how many more than 50 years has passed half of the century is crossed and dr henneman has crossed more than two and a half century so we are on a journey the life is a journey and this is being followed traditionally it is getting spread it he has established center at the san francisco at germany and many other part of the different part of the country where the people are practicing and trying to follow his principles phenomena so friends one thing that i the for the youngsters message is that you can realize you can explore and there are lot of the possibilities and the potentiality in the homeopathic system of the medicines the vast scope for the research vast scope for the research you can prepare the testimonials as dr purana sir has spoken this morning about putting you are making a test and they, they are government is also planning to have a uh, platform where you can put your testimonials so that it can be recorded and it can be stored for the future generation so that be honest to yourself one thing is that only honesty and perseverance will help you to follow the principle only with the honesty and the perseverance this is the only thing that is possibility that is possible with the homeopathy and to become a practitioner what dr henneman has told you mission mission and professions mission and professions and the quality of the doctor within your life quality of the doctor within your life do you feel that you are a doctor and what is the meaning of the doctor a doctor is a person who research make research and every patient you have to see you have to find out explore something from him it has been said that ki whatever new patient we see they are always new to us they are always uh, and they are, we have not seen them earlier no two human beings are alike no two human beings are alike all are different even the twins so how you can compare one man with the another no comparison so individuality is the basic thing basic thing so i cannot become dr b sahani i am will remain dr m sahani and my understanding will remain like me and his understanding but the difference the commonness is the philosophy at the spiritual level commonness is at the spiritual level because at the spiritual level everything is dynamic everything is uniform so spirituality is the part of the medicines what dr kent has spoken about uh, the philosophy the practice of the medicines and homeopathy requires you to believe in the god until and unless you have the faith in the spirituality this is the kent's writing until and unless you have the faith in the right uh, spirituality and the god you cannot practice medicines honestly so friends these are the feedbacks we have received from our master and ancestors and we have to if you can carry them these spirits in your life they can make you a great person man no one is born with the greatness everyone has to acquire everyone this is the human life the human life means acquiring 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 information and then go past um, uh, and th- then go away from this universe leaving behind the legends so what legends you are going to leave behind Dr. Sahani has lived behind the legends of transmitting the medicine uh, uh, to the telling patients, and what we, what we, are going to leave behind. Nothing is left. Nothing is left. 
So what can, you can contribute, your contribution is the only that will make you to remember for all and forever. The contributions are only uh, imprinted on this universal pattern. Contributions. So try and the life of the, this is the difference between the animal and the human beings. We are called, how, why we are separately named as human beings? Only because we have the ability, the mental analytical power, with that we can contribute to the society, contribute. The animals, they don't contribute, they eat. They eat, we can utilize them like a, a, like a mechanical instrument. And they are, they are born to eat, 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 and survival is for their things. But what we are, how we are different from the animals? We are different only because we are made to, uh, to return, give a return gift to the universe. So man is born to give the return gifts to the as a gratitude for being born on this platform of the universe. It is a gratefulness that you can, uh, gratitude that you can uh, make to the place where you are born. So it is wonderful things for you, sir. And if you can keep continue, continuing understanding about the um, uh, homeopathy, you can learn more, more, more. They are, it is a, like a, awesome. That's why, what, what, what is the tribute we can make to the great uh, healers? The only tribute is that the, as long as you make yourself Make yourself a learning point, learning point, learning and serving is the only things that we can think about having the, uh, to become a practice. So getting a degree is not so important. Getting recognition is important. And you have seen the life of Dr. Sani, who was born as a servant, who was born as a uh, pigeon in the field of laborer, laborer, where it was hand to mouth. Every day he has to earn, he has to earn for that. And with this earning, he has rose to such a destiny, he has created such a big empire today. So, nothing is uh, impossible, everything is possible. So, with these words, I feel I'm, uh, uh, I'm, pay, I'm pay, paying my tributes to my father and to a great saint and great healer and great uh, personality on this. Um, uh, on the born on this platform of the universe. So I think uh, with these words, I Yasika is back again, and uh, she may have the new message for us. Dr. Yasika, you are here now. Yes, sir. I'm already here since long. I think Dr. Kaplan has joined us again. Okay, great. Okay, great. Yeah, he has joined us from my link only, I think. Uh, I want to request him, sir. Are you with us? Hi there. Yes, yes I'm here. Great, sir. Thank you so much for joining. Can you please do me a favor? Uh, please, uh, on your video, I think there is uh, an option which is coming on your screen just above uh, my logo. It's There is an option on the screen of video. Turn video on. Um... I'm looking at it, Ten, attendees, it's, I'm not used to this software, but no, I am. Sir, just, uh, just look at the center of your screen, wherein you can see Dr. Sahani, sir. Can you see yeah, Dr. Four. MK, sir? I can see four, I'll just change it to, I can see four screens, and he's in the bottom corner, left hand corner. Screen. Yeah, in the second screen, uh, just to see in the center above, above him, just see in the center, there are four options which are coming. That says turn video on, turn audio on, off. Um, no, I don't see that. Um, it says on air. I see a picture. Now I can see no, two no. people in the picture. So center of the screen. Just see the center of the screen. Center of the screen. I can see four screens. And then there's another, there's a sort just of menu on the right-hand side. Yeah, just above the four screens, can you see an option of calling button, red calling button? Red button. I can see a red button. So I press that. Yeah. But it says end call. End yes, call. Sir, don't, 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 don't end it. Uh, just beside it. Just see beside it. There are four options. On air. No, know. beside it, sir. Right, left hand side. On your left side. On uh, left side. Oh, uh, let's see. Left side. 
Left side of what? I can see a speaker. Left, left to the uh, red button. Can you see four options? Um, I can see share your screen. Yeah. I can see uh, a pencil that says turn whiteboard on. Yes, sir. Can... Want me to press which one? Uh? Sir, I want you to press turn video on, the first one. Turn video on. Turn, oh, no, I can see it now. Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. great. Yeah. So sweet yeah. of you, sir. Thank you so much. Welcome to the platform. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. okay. So, uh, sir, uh, I think uh, Dr. Sani, sir, you can introduce, sir, so that yeah, we can yeah. have a session with him. Yes, sir. So, Dr. Brian Kaplan, we welcome you in this webinar. And uh, it is a great opportunity for us to listen to you from your country today. Dr. Brian Kaplan was born in South Africa on October 20. Hi, ah, just some uh, 11 days back, your birthday was there. So belated happy birthday to you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> and qualified as an orthodox medical doctor at the University of which has extended. In 1982, he located to England to study homeopathy at Royal London Homeopathic Hospital. And after completing a comprehensive training in homeopathy, exclusive for medical doctor, he became a member of the faculty of homeopathy in 1983 and a fellow in 2002. He then studied counseling nutritional dietitian, fitness, yoga, autogenic training, and proactive therapy. He has been an enthusiastic teacher since late 1980. And in 1991, he was the co-founder of the Homeopathic Professional Teaching Group, which continues to teach classical homeopathy to doctors, veterinarians, and nurses. He is also a lecturer at the Royal London uh, homeopathic Hospital in 1987. Dr. Kaplan, a co-editor with uh, Dr. Marine Harreling, uh, Dr. M. Gibson study homeopathic remedy. He has always been deeply interested in the homeopathic way of taking a medical history and in 2001 he published a book on taking the case, the homeopathic conversation, the great book that we have seen. For the past 10 years, Dr. Kaplan has practiced proactive therapy. The cutting edge is the use of humor and reverse psychology in medical psychotherapy. Wonderful uh, approach. Like homeopathy, proactive therapy embraces a contrarian approach when warmly and humorously encouraged to continue their self defeating patterns of behavior, patients quickly choose to prescribe own and intact their own solutions of their problem. See how he has authored several books. 2001, he published a book, The Homeopathic Conversation, The Art of Case Taking, Natural Medicine Spread, 2001. Then in 2010, ongoing Joint Advisory Board of London Art uh, Therapy Center, and 2017, uh, London Art Therapy Center, Physiotherapy Supervisor, where he is facilitating, uh, where he facilitates monthly interactive supervision groups. So, with these words, I welcome you, sir, on this great platform, and I request you to grace this occasion, uh, occasion with your presentations. Well, thank you very much. It, I would like to say it's very gracious of you to invite me to speak um, because India has a very special place in my heart with regard to homeopathy. And also, as you mentioned, I have uh, read some of your your yogic texts and been interested in, in, in yoga in various in its various forms. But I would like to particularly draw attention to my gratitude to India for keeping homeopathy alive. I think that there are big problems in the world in homeopathy, but I, the, uh, uh, with many, many attacks on homeopathy, particularly and embarrassingly, in the very city I live is one of the worst places for this. But in India, there are so many 
homeopaths, so many doctors using homeopathy, so many very well-trained homeopaths, and more importantly, so many patients that want homeopathy because of the, of the, of the, of the prestigious place that you've given homeopathy in your country, um, that this is, this is particularly gratifying for me and it is reassuring for me to know that whatever happens i'm sure that homeopathy will live on in india which means it can still spread and carry on to other places and i think there's starting to be a recovery in other places and i wouldn't be surprised in india if you've had your own skeptics and attacks there but i don't think when i've seen the numbers of how many homeopathic practitioners there are in india i'm very much reassured okay so we're going to cover three things today First of all, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, communicating on Zoom because I'm sure that many consultations are done on Zoom or on on um, on video, tele video medicine or telemedicine. That's what they call it in England, telemedicine. We talk a little bit about this. This is how we're communicating today. So we shall talk a little bit about this. Then I would like to go on to cover um, a little bit what the stuff that I read in that I wrote in my book, the homeopathic conversation, there's the Indian version, which I had a wonderful time when I came to India and lectured in Jaipur, Pune and um, Jaipur, Pune, Pune and Delhi. And uh, it was a very nice time. I very much enjoyed teaching in India and I will share some of the insights, some of what I wrote in the book and more importantly, where I've moved to from there and what I might have learned since writing the book. And finally, the third part, I would like to keep it a bit lighthearted and talk a little bit about the use of humor and this thing I use called provocative therapy, which can be seen as a type of homeopathic psychotherapy. Anyway, I will hear what you people have to say about it because there will be time for, for questions and to make this into a sort of dialogue. So let's talk a little bit about, let's talk a little bit about Zoom. Let's talk about telemedicine. What can we do? What can we do at this time? Now, obviously we know this virus has hit and has made face-to-face -face contact much more difficult. I don't know exactly what's happening in India, but I know that in England, GPs, are seeing very few patients. They are handling patients mainly online and in, in or using mediums like this, uh, Zoom and others. And uh, that's, that's what's happening. So there are a lot of consultations on Zoom. And you know something? I was frankly amazed. I recently attended a high-level doctor's meeting organized by, by a big organization only for medical doctors. And the doctor's talking. I could not believe how little attention they had paid to what they looked like on the screen. What they looked like on the screen. Now, I realize I'm putting, making myself vulnerable. Yeah, is that jacket all right? Whatever. Because, you know, I'm talking to you from a screen now. But I can tell you that I have made some effort, in a sense, right at the beginning of this period, to imagine what I look like on 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 video what what do you do how do you do this and when this when i watched this major presentation by very very high doctors i couldn't believe it there was a room and there was darkness and there was light at the back and out of the shadows was this doctor and what teaching me and you know what the subject of this conference was telemedicine using the most appalling appalling setup at home when you set up your office as a homeopath no matter where it is, no matter how humble it is, no matter how small it is, whether it's indoors, outdoors, in a shack, in a very air-conditioned building, wherever it is, you make an effort to, to, to make your, your surroundings congenial for someone to be able to talk to you and to unload onto you their deepest feelings. That, because homeopathy, homeopathy, is about subjective feelings more than it is about objective information that we can find out from the patient through tests, etc. The beauty of homeopathy is that we want the internal 
processing of the world by the patient. It's not just what the pain is or the type of pain, if it's sticking, if it's worse for the modalities, but it also what it does to the patient. Does the pain make you angry or sad or whatever? We want this very deep subject of information from somebody, and therefore the environment that we ask for it is important. So obviously, we're not going to talk now about how to set up your office, and although that's a big subject, and I do actually mention it um, in the book, how you choose your office and where you hang the patient's coat and all stuff like that. But what about Zoom? Well, you're also showing yourself on Zoom. And and funny enough, on Twitter, if you go to Twitter and you type in Room Rater, R-O-O-M-R-A-T-E-R, Room Rater, um, they will take you to various rooms and show you and people and what's distracting. So let me give you my own personal views and what I do. My feeling is everything other than you talking to the patient is a distraction. Okay, it's a distraction. So what I've got here is a setup. Is a simple, this is not a virtual background behind me. This over here is an actual screen. It's a blue screen or a green screen. Either side is green. Well, if you get a screen like this, which is not expensive, if you use a screen like this, you can, you can use your virtual backgrounds. I noticed one of you was using a virtual background was working nicely. The virtual backgrounds will work much better. In addition, I hope the sound is coming across now. I have tested and everything. I use a simple process like this, which is this is basically a USB microphone. So because of basically, remember, your computer that you bought maybe five years ago or three years ago, or whatever years ago, it was not designed as a tele for telemedicine. It's, it's speaker, it's, it's a microphone, and it's camera are not the greatest quality. So if you, you can get a USB um, microphone, and then you can bring the microphone closer to you. So this microphone is not... Um, at my laptop, it is much closer to me than that. So that's very simple. These are not expensive, by the way. These are small improvements. And then just to have a soft lighting, I used photographic, um, um, the white umbrellas of the soft, dispersible light of photographic um, um, umbrellas, photographic lighting, also inexpensive, inexpensive. And I am now also going to be using a um a webcam that's plugged in by usb and that would be the final improvement but i'm very aware of the different in, of the different um of the different ways that we can improve our communication so that's my choice i'm not saying you shouldn't choose what everyone else chooses books everybody now lives in a library as far as zoom is concerned and uh, with with wonderful books behind them. But the books are distracting, the titles of the books. If I'm talking to someone and uh, there's lots of books behind them, my eyes go to the titles. Okay, so that's distracting. Um, a few issues. Some I have had a request if someone can record the session. I always say yes. It's not I won't record a session for myself, but if someone wants the session recorded, um, look, it's their session. They, they're they paying for it. It's their, They've come to the doctor. I don't have a problem with that, which is interesting because in, I would have had a problem in my consulting if someone walked in with a tripod and lights and a camera. I would wonder what they're doing. But sometimes I, I, I may not allow it on the first visit. Who knows my, who might be phoning me? Um, other things to notice, to think about on Zoom is eye contact. Now, I'm looking at you now. I would hope that it looks as if I'm looking at you now. At this moment, I hope it looks as if I'm looking at you now. I can look at my, you know, I can look at a various, in various media here. I could look at a small section of the screen and see my face and see if I'm looking at you. But you know I'm not looking into your eyes because you're aware this is Zoom. But it gives the impression that I'm looking at you. So it's quite simple just to look at what you look like. You've got the technology there what do you look like do you look like you're talking to the patient do you look like you're listening and this is so uh, i would mainly look try to put the patient's picture by moving my my laptop around i would try to put the patient's picture um, in my direct eyesight so therefore if i'm looking at the patient it looks as if I'm looking at them. But the best way is just to keep an eye on what you, what you look like yourself while you're talking to people every now and then. Um, because the, the, the patient is going to feel they're talking to you and that you want to give the 
the feeling that you're listening. This is something that we do lose. I believe that when two people are in a room, there's all sorts of connections, interconnectivity, subtle clues, etc. We lose a lot of those, but we can still try to make it as convivial as possible, our process of talking um, to patients. Um, what else do we lose in telemedicine? We lose the feeling, we lose the physical contact, the shaking of hands with the patient. Who knows when people will freely shake hands again? We lose smell. We lose the, um, the movement of the patient. The, the, as they came into the room, the walking in my book, homeopathic conversation. Um, I talk about how the process begins when you see the patient walk into the room, when they sit down, when you take their coat, everything, all these little details, which you all were using, even when you didn't even particularly think you were using them, you were still using them. You were absorbing this information. Okay. So I'm recommending a plain background for the doctor, for the homeopath. I'm recommending a uh, good sound, good lighting. Lighting is obvious on Zoom. If you want light, the light must come at you, at you, not above you on the sides or on the lamp in the corner of the room. The light should come at you. You don't have, to, once again, this doesn't cost. It's just soft lighting that comes at you is simple. And make sure that you've got good sound. As I said, for a small amount of money, you can, you can um, uh, upgrade your sound. Now, when you're looking at the patient, that you're not going to be able to control how the patient looks. So the patient is talking to you, and you will notice what the patient has chosen to let you see. I, I'm sure that many of you have on Zoom have seen many, many, um, many different rooms, and often giving you information about um, the patient. Um, look. We could probably write, probably write a paper on how to pick up homeopathic clues that you would only see on Zoom. Because when a patient comes to see you, they are sitting in your room with you and talking to you and you're getting to know them. But when you're talking to them on Zoom or in electronic communication, you are seeing them in their home. And once they show you the home, there are all sorts of clues. So this is what I'm saying. You don't, you don't want the patient to be curious about your clues. This is, this is some, the clues that you might be giving. You want a neutral. I'm coming from a neutral background. I could be anywhere in the world. Anywhere. It doesn't matter. This is, the, this is something we'll come on to when I talk about what we can learn about psychotherapy from psychotherapy and homeopathy. It's not important for the patient to know every, any, much about you. You need to be a blank page. You have a blank page in front of you, and you are a blank page in order to record the patient's subjective experience of what is happening in their lives at the time of the illness, including the symptoms of the illness and including psychological and general reactions to the illness. This, these are what we call in homeopathy symptoms. Symptoms are subjective experience of the patient, not objectively the doctor making a diagnosis or an x-ray or putting his hand and it on the, on the, on the swelling or whatever. This is what the patient feels subjectively. So the patient takes you into their room on Zoom, and there you are. You can see plenty, right? You can see things about their house, whatever, or if they haven't chosen to show you anything, whatever it is, like just very simple things. I mean, if you saw a beautifully tidy house where everything was perfectly in order and, and the patient had set up the shot very carefully, you know, you'd be thinking of, Remedies, you know, Carcinosa and Arsenicum album. You might be, I'm not saying it's as simple as that, but you were thinking this is an orderly person and they want to share an orderly environment with you. If you had, if it was a very aesthetic environment where you saw lovely fabric and where you saw that the person had put a lot of effort into, into their homemaking and creating the room for you, well, in my mind, I would be thinking of remedies that include an aesthetic appreciation, where an appreciation of aestheticism, of beauty in the world, and wanting to make environment beauty. I would be thinking of remedies like, like phosphorus, natrium carbonicum, and many others. But this is this is information um, from Zoom. If it was a very messy environment, 
very messy environment. Well, you know, we have remedies for that as well, sulfur, mercury, many. But it's still, if you saw extremely messy environment, would you think arsenic amalgam? No, it's against the arsenic amalgam if you saw a messy environment. And we do, we do see these environments. If you see someone like me, maybe you think through you. He doesn't want to, doesn't want any secret of you. He doesn't want you to see his background. That's not my reason for doing it. But if a client did it, maybe, who knows? But uh, what if someone wants to just look on a plain background, a plain wall behind them, you get that as well. Sometimes you see that as well. So I think we need to be flexible. We need to understand this, this medium. We need to use it well. We need to adapt it for homeopathy. Homeopathy is always adapted, adapted with as to to improvements in medicine, improvements in technology. I mean, a wonderful example of how homeopathy uses adapts to the advent of technology is computers. I'm sure most of the people listening here, and I don't know how many of you you are. Oh, I can't see you. You can see me, um, but I'm sure many of you use a computer or you keep your notes on a computer or you have a repertory on computer um this we 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 do we have to adapt and we shall adapt to this in fact i believe that we can adapt to it much better than ordinary doctors why um because the main thing we use is homeopathy and for us to be quietly listening to the patient is what we do okay we may examine patients i know homeopaths in 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 india from my travels in india and my talks with homeopaths are very well trained they can diagnose like doctors you might not prescribe drugs or do surgery but you you, you have the knowledge of doing a physical examination etc you can do um you can do these things but the main thing that we do as homeopaths is listen we listen that's what we do. And we listen and we try to record what we're hearing about the patient's movie, the movie of their life during the illness or since they've become ill or how things change have become ill. And we listen to that. And this we can do on Zoom very well. And one last point is that we lose out in Zoom on not seeing the patient's movements, how they sit in the chair, all of their clothes that their background, smell, what, you know, uh, uh, vibes, you know, I don't know what you'd call it, auras, vibes, whatever you call it. That's just that feeling of being in the room with someone we miss out. But we have one thing extra. We have detailed facial things. We can really see what people look like when they are talking to us. They, they feel, we can, we can have a lot of facial clues. So we have to go to more facial clues, but much can be done. Much can be done on Zoom. Just be creative, be open, use it in new ways, and make it work for you. Certainly, we can use homeopathy on Zoom. Okay. What people called uh, etiquette, okay, and the way we talk to people, ask them if they're comfortable with the medium. Um, might call this an etiquette, if you like, for, for good etiquette on the internet or even Zoom etiquette etiquette on zoom how to relate to people on zoom okay so okay so we leave it there there'll be more experience with it technology will probably improve and allow you to do more things but thank heavens we have this at least at this tough time that we're all going through with this virus okay one just last last um thing to mention is that silence um in the silence, and this is to talk about silence. Silence is very important in homeopathy and in psychotherapy and psychological medicine because one has to be able to be comfortable with silence. And good homeop homeopathy is known this as well, just to allow a silence to be rather than push someone with a question because they might be formulating something in their mind that they want to share uh, with you. Okay, so but on Zoom, the silence might be a breakdown of, of Wi-Fi or the, 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 they haven't got connection. So it's harder to interpret a silence. But you can, you can do your best. Okay. On to, on, to, um, on to the next subject. That's Zoom and in terms of communication. I thought it's important in this era. Now, my main, in my book, The Homeopathic um, Conversation, yes, of course I have, this is the Indian edition um, that's only for sale in South uh, 
uh, in South Asia. And uh, in my book, what I, I was very interested in psychotherapy, the techniques of psychotherapy, and what the different psychotherapists had brought to the table, um, as it were. And uh, the, the main, uh, you know, the features I could sum up pretty quickly for you. I think what we learned from Freud is, is um, let, being able to be quiet, let the person speak, let the unconscious emerge. Sometimes the Freudian slip, not as much uh, as Jung, for example, the many archetypes of Jung describes his way of describing patients is similar to the many different homeopathic remedies in some ways. And there have been homeopathic uh, doctors that have been Jungian analysts that have drawn attention to this. And, and you know, for almost from every, every psychotherapist, every psychotherapist that produced new theory, it comes to us as well. It's useful for us because we pay attention to the patient's subjective experience once more so what is the subjective experience is essentially emotional if something happens to you and you're in pain how do you deal with it are you stoical are you cheerful do you cry do you not cry you see and this is not always only only um exhibited in uh, the answers to questions is the famous case which i love uh, well, famous, famous to me because it was taught to me by a great teacher of mine, Dennis Sampa in London. And uh, Dennis Sampa was a very quietly quiet, people who've read the book will know the story, was a very quiet, reserved English gentleman type, a very, very gentlemanly, softly spoken man. And his favorite thing to say in homeopathy was anything else or nothing, just to wait. And once he had a woman there who was in pain, quite severe pain and he sort of asked her about the pain and anything more anything else he said and there was silence and he was comfortable with the silence and the woman suddenly stood up and she banged on the desk don't just sit there do something and Dennis Sumper sat back in his chair but instead of being insulted instead of thinking this woman is insulting me I am a doctor I am a famous homeopathic doctor she is insulting me he thought she's in pain and she's become angry very easily. What's the main remedy for anger in pain? And he, as he said, as the woman had said to him, don't just sit there, do something. He said, so I gave her chamomilla and it did something. Okay, so this is the observation. This is the observation of what happens. Like often if we get into an entanglement with a patient or the patient gets angry with us because they're not better or for the fee or any reason, we defend ourselves a bit. But the most important thing to realize, especially when the patient is off guard, when the patient isn't only talking about their illness, is to realize this is all information. Even when the patient shouts at me or was angry with me, this is all, all information and i looked at the teachings of my uh teacher eric laderman who was a homeopath he was a dermatologist he was a psychiatrist and he wrote books on psychotherapy he believed um, that the goal of therapy the goal of psychotherapy was to make the unconscious conscience conscious now that's a hell of a tongue twister the unconscious you got conscience our feeling of doing the right thing to make the that feeling of doing the right thing your morality your conscious conscience may be buried in your unconscious and it's the job of the therapist to help it come forward so you live according to your own conscience you live according to your own conscience and he believed when you're when you're following your own conscience you are less likely to be neurotic and suffer from psychological symptoms. That was his feeling. And he combined this nicely with homeopathy. Um, he was an old fashioned homeopath, but you know, sort of knew Burrica almost off by heart, that sort of homeopath. And I've noticed that only, only in homeopaths from one country, and that's India, people that seem to know Burrica inside out. That was in the eighties. More recently, I don't know if Burrica still retains its prestigious position as an as an overall homeopathic materia medica i suspect 
it does. I suspect it does. It's a good book. And so finally, what I, I mentioned, and, you know, I'm giving you a synopsis in uh, some ways of the book here, was the work of Carl Ransom Rogers. Now, this is, in a sense, central to my book is that Rogers noticed something. So I'm going to go straight to Rogers because I covered a lot of other people. You can read them in the book, but I'm going to go to the one that I thought was the most important for us to learn and share that with you today. Rogers was an American in the 20th century. I think he died in the 60s or 70s. He was a very conservative man. Um, one uh, therapist that I met described him as a very gray man wearing a gray suit and driving a gray Volvo. So he, he was a very conservative man. He was no hippie or rebel, was Carl Rogers. Now, what Carl Rogers noticed something that I will always be thankful to him personally to pointing out to me, and that is this. He said the results of therapy... Now, this is, this is uh, psychotherapy. Do not depend on the theories of the psychotherapist or the psychoanalyst, be it Freud or Jung or the many people who have written many thick books on psychotherapy. It doesn't depend on that. What it depends on, said Rogers, the result, was three factors which affect the quality of communication between the therapist and the patient. And all of these three qualities are brought to the situation by the therapist, or in our case, the homeopath or the doctor. What it is, what are these three factors? One, empathy. The patient must feel that the doctor or the homeopath understands what they are feeling. You have to find a way of indicating that you do understand. There are many ways you can describe the patient's story back to them in your own words, but you need to convey it. could be with your eyes. It could be just the feeling in the room. It could be anything. But if the patient doesn't feel that you understand somewhat what it feels like to be in their shoes, they will not reveal more. That's empathy. The second one is what Rogers called unconditional positive regard. It's a complex term. I prefer the word warmth, which he also used. And you could go further. You could say love. You could say if the patient feels the requisite love, well, let's not use love in any form other than what we're talking about, the appropriate love that a doctor feels for his patient or her patient. They need to feel that warmth that kind of conditional positive regard. I would go further. I would say it really helps if you exude, if you exude a feeling that I really want you to get better. I want this. I want you to get better, but, but really want it, okay? Not just to find a remedy and move on to the next patient. That helps. That that's, that's is a, uh, un, what Rogers called unconditional positive regard. So we've got empathy, We've got unconditional positive regard, and finally, a third one, and that is genuineness or authenticity. Authenticity or genuineness. This is very important, and it would seem obvious. It would seem obvious that you have to be genuine, that none of these other things, you can't fake empathy, you can't fake unconditional positive regard, and everything you say needs to be genuine. And you'd think it's obvious until you see Doctors that aren't genuine, that aren't genuine, that are talking in boilerplate language. Boilerplate language means like you've got a big um, pot on the stove and you've got your set sayings and you take this ladle and you give this one a set saying and your cliches and, and the person doesn't feel that you are fully engaged or that you're making up these things as you go along. You have set statements um, that you use. <laughs> Okay, so that's that was Rogers, and I thought that Rogers was by far, taught me by far more than any other of the psychotherapists or psychologists, etc. Now, you can read my book, of course, if you want to read the book, you will read, and there are helpful hints from all other therapists, but none as much as Rogers. So if you took, if you haven't read my book, 
and you and you won't be reading it for a while or whatever obviously i'm happy very happy when people read my book but um but it was written some 19 nearly 20 years ago now um we you you will learn much of what other therapists said but if you just take something from this talk now you know i'm very much now I'm a person, if I'm sitting in a lecture, I want to learn something now and I want to put it in my head now, not write it down from some to, to I can think, oh, well, I've got it written down now and I might never read those notes or maybe I'll read them. Better put it in your head now. Remember, take three things from this lecture or this talk now, empathy, unconditional positive regard, genuineness, Carl Rogers, perfectly apply to homeopathy take that if you take that from this talk i'm happy okay so going on i've continued to explore this and as the gentleman doctor in the in the introduction kindly mentioned that i do something called provocative therapy which is a type of 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 therapy that uses reverse psychology the opposite of what we might expect okay so the opposite of what we might expect Let's just look at this a little bit, the use of reverse psychology, because it's contrarian, like homeopathy. It is the antithesis of what you would expect from a homeopath or from a doctor, okay? So, it, or from a medicine. The, homeo the, the medicine op acts in the opposite. Somalia, similibus curante, likes to be treated by likes, not allopathically. It's what's surprising. And so is this approach. But first of all, I'd like to just to share with you. I'd like just to share with you a a um, appreciation of what humor does in medicine. Humor and laughter. Humor and laughter, uh, because these are part of the provocative therapy. Remember, the provocative therapy has two functions. It has one is reverse psychology, and the other is humor. Okay, so and this comes into homeopathy. Now, humor and laughter. Now, I made up a mnemonic, called it Kaplan's mnemonic, to remind us of the physiological benefits of laughter. Physiological and physical benefits. I'll go through it quickly. The mnemonic is SMILEY. S-M-I-L-E-E. -E, SMILEY. S stands for stress hormones. We can test after a big laugh, stress hormones, adrenaline, noradrenaline, cortisol go down. M, muscular relaxation. You can show this with 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 muscle testing um i stands for increased immunity igg iga they go up during after bouts of laughter l stands for benefit to lungs we re, we we expel the residual volume in the of air in the lungs allowing much more fresh air to come in e stands for exercise laughing is a form of exercise and e also stands for endorphins and enkephalins which are high making sort of good feel good hormones in the body which go up in laughter and in and more recently there's more been studies showing that laughter gives cardiac protection and people a norwegian study showing that people with a good sense of humor people with a good sense of humor live longer people with a good sense of humor live longer norwegian study so we know all this and in fact once again india here is big again because i know that in india you have these big um, meetings where people come and just laugh, laugh at each other, laughing, laugh at nothing. Okay, laugh at nothing. And in fact, there is someone guy called himself the laughter guru called Madan Kataria. I think he lives in America now, but he's the sort of, he can laugh at will. He can fake laugh at will. And so all these people are correct in saying one thing, and that is for the physiological benefits of laughter. For the physiological benefits of laughter, which I've just listed, it doesn't matter what you laugh at. You can laugh at nothing. You can make yourself laugh at a white wall, at paint drying on a wall. You can laugh at an ant crawling on the, on the, on the ground. You can laugh at someone else looking at you. You can laugh at anything. You still get all the physi physiological benefits of laughter. So this is very sad for comedians that a very sophisticated comedian makes a joke and you laugh, but you only get the same benefit as you laugh at someone wearing a funny hat, okay? So that's the physiological benefits of laughter. What I'm working on now in my next book, which will be called Almost Happy, Pushing Your Buttons with Reverse Psychology, will be published next year, is, isn't there more? You see, isn't there more that we can get out of laughter? And there is, and it comes into homeopathic consultation as well. 
you see, to get the benefits of laughter, physiological benefits, that's great. So people who laugh more and appreciate humor, live longer and have all these benefits. This is what this is what the studies say. And this is not nonsense. This is, if you want to see the data on this, the name of the doctor is Dr. Fry, F-R-Y. If you put in Dr. Fry, Stanford University, laughter or gelotology, gelotology, G-E-L-O-T-O-L-O-G-Y, gelotology is a study of the health benefits of laughter. Um, um, an actual word. So, so you know, this has absolutely been documented. But let's look holistically at this thing now. In If we look at laughter, so, okay, so we know it's good for the body. That's physiology. What about the mind and even the spirit? Well, well, if we look at the mind, and, and is laughter good for the mind? We know it is. It makes us feel happier, um, etc. But here's... Here's the central point that I've been leading to. If you are talking to a doctor or a therapist or a homeopath and you both laugh, if you laugh with each other, not laughing at the patient, obviously, you laugh with each other. In that laughter, when you have all the physiological benefits, the lowered stress, the relaxed muscles, the increased immunity, the lung capacity improved, the exercise, the endorphins, the encephalins, making you feel good, here's the point. Isn't that a perfect time to address something that is psychologically painful, whether it be with a doctor, with a homeopath, with a psychotherapist, psychiatrist, whatever you like, isn't that, in that moment of laughter, in that moment of expressing happiness and smiling and laughing, laughing then in that stage, when you feel, when the patient feels strong in that way and feels trusting and is laughing with the homeopath or the doctor, they may reveal or they may talk about things that are very painful. The, the laughter is acting as a balm or a medicine to enable you to go smoothly through this difficult period of talking um, with something about to somebody else about something that is intensely painful embarrassing, humiliating. The laughter acts as a wonderful balm, but it's a skill because different patients will require a different way of getting there. I can usually test the water gently and then often we'll be laughing together and, and some patients will not want to laugh. They'll think medicine's a serious business, my illness is a serious business, but there is a way of doing this. And you know, I when I do it with people who know that I work with, with laughter and humor and get them to laugh at their problems and ask them to do more, to do more of the same. You might encourage a smoker to smoke more. Why are you only smoking Marlboro Lights? You're a man. Shouldn't you be smoking the red Marlboros or cigars or a pipe? Shouldn't you be doing something like that? Give up? Why give up? Why you want to give up smoking? Why surely you should wait for some cardiac symptoms like chest pain or pain going down your left shoulder or breathlessness? Wait till then, and, so, and they seem to say, "No, no, no, I need to stop now." Once they once, but it has to be done. And the golden rule, the golden rule of using humor, the golden rule. Here's another one for you to remember from today's lecture. The, remember Rogers, empathy, <clears throat> empathy. Unconditional positive regard, genuineness. Fourth thing to remember from this lecture, the golden rule of using humor in medicine or homeopathy. You can say what you like to somebody as long as you have a twinkle in your eye and affection in the heart. That's the golden rule of provocative therapy. It applies to everything. Affection in the heart. Okay. I'm getting a thing says you've been on air for 2.40, 2 hours, 45, so you have 50 minutes. So we will soon end and take a few questions. So there you are. Keep affection in your heart and a twinkle in your eye, and you can say anything you like um, to patients, anything you like. Okay, and then just think about it, what it does for you to walk around with affection in your heart, with love. Affection in your heart, provocative therapy, is the same as what Rogers called unconditional positive regard or warmth 
was simply, simply that word, love, love. If your patient feels that the appropriate love from the doctor, you could say anything to them and you can make them laugh. Finally, laughter at a spiritual, laughter at a spiritual level. Well, I wouldn't claim laughter has benefits at a spiritual level, but I have noticed that very wise men, sadhus, gurus, swamis that I've met in my lifetime and some of um, uh, teachers of, of Western um, religions or philosophy, but more Indian, more Eastern, I have noticed this chuckling element, this, this laughter element that seems to emerge in these very wise men that know a lot about suffering and women, wise men and women that know a lot about suffering. And yet there's something that is amusing. There's a sort of cosmic joke as well. So this is the effects of laughter at all these levels. Physical, I gave it to you. Psychological, isn't it a good time to talk about something that's difficult to talk about and painful when you're laughing? And finally, even spiritual dimension. There might be a sort of cosmic humor, a cosmic joke about how we take things so seriously. And I have noticed this, as I say, in gurus and uh, teachers of Eastern philosophy. Okay, so I will, that's been nice to talk to you. It's a strange experience. I can't see anyone. I can just see myself talking to myself, but I am aware that people are listening. So now let me hear from you. Anyone who has a question, I'd be more than happy to do my best to answer it. Thank you, sir. Sure. Very nice informations. And you have presented such a uh, good inspirations for all. Definitely, it is uh, thought provoking as well as inspiration for all today on this platform. And we are on behalf of the Homeopathic Science Congress Society, Homeopathy 360 and Super Institute of Homeopathy. We are express our thankful thanks to you for your wonderful presentations. And we expect many more such presentations in future also. We shall be in touch. We shall be continuing with your presentations. Now I request uh, Dr. Yasika Ji. Dr. Yasika Ji, you are in the room. Yes, sir, I'm here only. So now we have come to the end of this session. And uh, with these uh, remarks, I uh, feel that uh, we have succeeded in making some of the lights and spread that was shown by Dr. Sahani for providing and keep on learning and surfing. Because I feel that if we can create or develop this approach within everyone, the homeopathy science will grow more and more and it will flourish like anything. So with these words, I uh, end my session here and I request Dr. Yasika to make the final uh, remarks. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, for your uh, sum summary, sir. I hope everybody's, everyone's query is already being solved. So I want to uh, request the audience, if you have any questions still from Dr. Brian, sir, or anybody, uh, uh, Dr. Prakash, sir, or uh, I think Dr. Elephant, sir, is not with us. But uh, if you have any queries, we can connect to them. Uh, Dr. Ashok, uh, it would be f uh, better if you can write, uh, because I, I don't think we can uh, provide you this option to... Check if uh, if you can speak now. I've given you this. Uh, I've given you the permission to speak. Can you try now, Doctor Ashok? Okay. If you have any queries, anyone, please uh, post in the chat box. We'll have we have Doctor Brian Kaplan sir as well as Doctor Sahani sir to discuss any of the queries. Because we have very less time left, only five minutes left, so we need to wind up the session also. I think there are no more questions, sir. Um, Dr. Ashok, I would request you to please type your query. It would be better uh, rather than speaking.
so i want to thank uh, dr brian kaplan sir after so many problems uh, after so many uh, like you had a hectic day and uh, then uh, you joined us and you've guided so well about the telemedicine and all the things you had to cover in the presentation it was great sir thank you so much for coming on this platform and guiding us uh, uh, we were we were awaiting uh, actually because uh, everybody is always excited to learn from you and i have also heard a lot about you uh, since i've entered to this profession uh, into my practice so thank you so much sir for coming and uh, i i would say uh, with your gracious presence you have enlightened all the uh, delegates as well as all of us and home with the 360 and home with the science congress society so thank you so much sir and also i would like to present my thanks to dr mp sani sir for uh, coordinating the session so well and dr prakash sir as well as dr lm khan sir for for a great session uh, since 1 pm so i hope all the audi the audience enjoyed and i also want to thank the audience for their patient listening and tomorrow also we will be coming up with a uh with uh, with the great uh, with uh, with new speakers and uh, they'll be guiding us uh, about uh, uh, different topics i'll just announce what all topics we'll be covering tomorrow for tomorrow's webinar we have tomorrow's session the day 2 of this webinar at 1 o'clock again so i think uh, we have uh, we 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 have we, the session would be chaired by dr cheramanan sir and uh, the coordinator of the session would be dr sanjeev kumar singh sir and also dr uh, uh, the uh, uh, the sorry the, spe the speakers would be dr sanjeev kumar singh sir and dr anirban sukul sir from sukul homeopathic institute and also uh, dr marion kelni kelen sir kelen ma'am to uh, she will be guiding us uh, on the homeopathic treatment of traumatized women and we'll also be discussing the biological effects of ultra low doses so tomorrow is going to be a research oriented webinar so i hope everybody will join us tomorrow again so thank you so much sir you want to say something uh, dr sahani sir and dr brian sir you want to say something um well just thanks very much it's uh um i sense there people listening i can't see them i can only see the two of you and um, but i sense there were people listening and um uh, it's always a pleasure to be in touch with my colleagues in india particular pleasure so thank so you very much thank you so much thank you so much sir uh, for your uh, this thanks also and uh, joining us uh, and making this program a great success for us uh, i thank uh, dr yasika ji for your nice coordinations i thank dr mr manish jain uh, the who is the man behind everything and then i thank uh, uh, dr arun pan sukul the sukul institute of homeopathy and uh, all our colleagues uh, who have contributed to make this program a great success and thank you all thank you so much sir thank you audience for your wonderful comments i i uh, now i'm going to end this session uh, with due permission sir can uh, can we end today's session thank you sir yeah, you thank can. you so much uh, thank bye. you so much thank you. Bye -bye. thank you thank you sir